Well, welcome. This is an exciting event. There's a story about a six-year-old boy. He was in church one morning and he saw for the first time the rite of baptism by immersion. Now, he was greatly interested in it. And the next morning, he proceeded to baptize three cats in his bathtub. The first kitten bore it pretty good. So did the other young cat. But the old family cat, well, she was not so pleased. She rebelled, she struggled with him, clawed and tore at him, and got away. With considerable effort, he caught it again, and he proceeded with the ceremony, but she acted worse than ever. She clawed him, she spit, she scratched his hands and his face. Finally, after barely getting her splattered with water, he dropped her on the floor in disgust and said, fine, be an atheist. I would not recommend you do that at home. So today, we are here to witness, as witnesses, a very beautiful and exciting event. A public confession of faith in Jesus. A solemn and as serious and as exciting as a wedding because when we give our life to Christ, we become part of the bride of Christ, of the church. Baptism is an ordinance in the Christian faith. And Jesus said to his disciples, and so to us, that we are to go into all the nations and baptize in the name of the Father, in the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's Matthew 28, 19. In other words, we lead the nations to Jesus, to a public confession in Christ Jesus. And having been a new person and born again, are resurrected out of the tomb and living with Jesus when you come up out of the water. Baptism as an adult or even a child who is of age of accountability and who decides on their own to be baptized is different than child baptism, christening, or baby dedication. Those are done when parents bring the child before the Lord and the congregation and make a public declaration of their covenant before God to raise the child or children as Christians and encourage them in their walk to follow Jesus. Dedication is a parent's role. And it's not a command, even though Jesus himself was dedicated unto the Lord. It's not a command. But baptism is a command by Jesus, who also was baptized. So if you were christened, baptized, or dedicated as a child, that was for your parents, not yourself. And if you've received Jesus as your Lord, you should consider adult baptism for yourself. And today we're going to look at baptism in the Bible, one example of it, and how it played out. But first, let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you have commanded baptism. It's an ordinance. And we thank you, Lord, that your word explains in different ways why and how we should be baptized. And so today, Lord, as we look at one of those examples, we pray that you would open your word to us and make it alive to our spirit. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. Acts 8, 26 to 31, we read, But an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Get ready and go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. And so he got ready, and he went. And there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. And he had come to Jerusalem to worship. And he was returning and sitting in his chariot and was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go up and join this chariot. So Philip ran up, and he heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, well, how could I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and to sit with him. Now the passage of scripture which he was reading was this. He was led like a sheep to slaughter, and like a lamb that is silent before its shears, so he does not open his mouth. In humiliation, his justice was taken away. Who will describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The Holy Spirit told Philip to catch up the chariot, where the eunuch was reading Isaiah 53, 7 to 8. And he was reading it out loud, as, as people often did um, in, that, in that day especially. And so when Philip came up, he heard what the eunuch was reading. And 
that gave him opportunity to ask and to get involved and to, to actually evangelize. Acts 8, 34 to 39 says, the eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? And Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here's water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. The eunuch had requested to be baptized and so he was. And it begs the question, what does it take? What is the criteria to be baptized? It's based on Acts 8, 37. If you believe with all your heart. The eunuch responded that he believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And Philip baptized him. Now the biblical way to be baptized is submersion. To go down into the water, Acts 8, 38. And come up out of the water, Acts 8. 839 as the eunuch did that is the traditional way that the church has has been doing baptism it's a way that the bible shows us as a side note in case you're in case anybody's wondering what happened to that eunuch after philip disappeared according to Irenaeus, a second century writer he returned to his country ethiopia and shared the gospel and by the fourth century christianity was ethiopia's official religion this eunuch was instrumental in bringing Christ to that country. And as long as we're a willing vessel, Christ can use us, God can use us to spread the gospel and change the world. Baptism is an important step in a Christian's journey of faith. It portrays the union with Christ in his death and resurrection. When we trust in Christ, his death counts as our death. His resurrection is our resurrection into new life. It symbolizes spiritual transformation. A person who lived in unbelief and rebellion against God now has ceased to exist. And in its place, his place, her place, is a new person born who walks in faith and obedience to Christ. Baptism is a public declaration of our faith in Christ. And like a wedding ceremony, publicly declares a commitment to each other, to God, and yourself between you and God as a spiritual commitment publicly declared before others of a new life in him. Now, baptism is not a means to salvation. It's a public declaration of your salvation. And it's only for believers. Martina and Annabelle, and now Justina. This is a call to a new life united with Jesus and his body, the church. It's a reminder that you are a part of something bigger than you are. And when we take on the name of Christian, we take on the name of Christ. And we represent him to the world around us, and we need to represent him well. Acts 2.38, Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead you now, lead you forward. He will give you a sense of conviction when you do something to grieve him. He will encourage you, strengthen you, and produce in you the attributes of the Holy Spirit, which are found in Galatians 5. 22 to 23, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Baptism is your outward sign of your inward decision to follow Jesus, your willingness to be transformed by him and transferred into his kingdom. Baptism is a sacred and beautiful moment. It's repentance. It's faith. It's a new life in Jesus. It's the death and resurrection of Jesus in the same way he died and was buried and rose from the grave. We go into the water, under the water, and up as a new spiritual person. It's done, one, to obey Christ's command, two, to publicly profess Jesus and not be ashamed of his name. 
and three, to commit to being a part of the church family that you are in. Now, because you have made a profession of faith to follow Jesus and wish to make this declaration publicly, we're going to give you that opportunity right away to do that. Church family, when these ladies come out of the water, this is an exciting event. This is a symbolism of a new life, a new way of living, and a dedication to their Lord and Savior, publicly done before us, an honor and privilege. And I would encourage you to let loose with the excitement and the celebration, because I am certain, because as the command of Jesus, heaven celebrates too. So we will clap our hands, we will shout, we will, we will be excited for them, amen? Amen. So um, before we do this, uh, I just wanna say that for the first time in the history of this church, first time, we're gonna open up baptism for others who have received Jesus and wish to be baptized for the first time ever. So baby dedication, christening, baby baptism doesn't count, remember. If you have accepted Jesus into your heart and you want to make a public declaration as Jesus has said to do in obedience to him, today is a good day. It's a day to make that commitment. So we're gonna open this up after the girls come out of the water. Uh, we've already had Justina come and say she wants to be baptized. If anybody else wants to be, um, then, then come forward as soon as the girls come out of the water, all right, and have a seat. And we will, we don't have any extra clothing for you, but we do have extra nice big towels. So, so we will uh, we'll get you wrapped up anyway. So, all right, without any further ado, amen. Let's get started. <laughs> 